Welcome to Shark Games. Today I will be showing you guys how you can easily add pathfinding in Unity. Pathfinding is an algorithm used by a lot of games to find a target and navigate there using the shortest possible route, while avoiding things like obstacles. This can be incredibly useful in a ton of different games because you can use it to have enemies chase the player, have the player move on its own and more. This tutorial will be using Unity's built-in nav mesh system, which is unfortunately exclusive for 3D projects. But in a different video, I will be explaining how to add pathfinding to a 2D project as well. All right, so I have this completely empty 3D scene with absolutely nothing in it. First, I'll create a new plane object and call it ground. I'll also make it a bit bigger. Next, I'll create a new material called test mat and set its albedo texture to the default material. I'll then set tiling to 1010 and drag and drop the material onto the ground. Now we have a ground that actually has a little texture on it, so it's easier to see the AI walking around. Now let's create a sphere object, which I call target. I'll set the scale to 2, 2, 2 and give it a new material. Let's call this material target mat and let's make it blue. This will represent the target that the AI will move towards. Now let's place the target object somewhere on the ground. All right, now let's create another object called agent, this time being a bean and making it also a bit bigger. Let's create yet another material, this time I'll call it agent mat and make it red. Drag and drop the agent mat onto the agent object and we're nearly ready to start coding. I'll place the agent to the opposite side of the target object. Now let's create a cube object and place it somewhere in the scene between the agent and the target. I'll give the test mat material to the cube and I copy and paste the cube a couple of times to make it more difficult to get to the target. Now let's go to window, AI, navigation. This will open the navigation window where we can set all sorts of things. I'll first select the ground object and on the navigation window, I'll check the navigation static box. This box basically means that the object won't be moving during gameplay. I'll then set navigation area to walkable since I want the agent to walk on the ground. Then let's get to the bake tab. Here you can change a bunch of things but for now I'll select bake. You can immediately see a blue color appearing over the ground. This means that AI agents will be able to walk on the entire ground which is exactly what we want. However I don't want the agent to walk into obstacles. This is very easy to fix however. Let's select all of the cube, go back to the navigation tab and select navigation static once again. But unlike the ground, I don't want the AI to walk on the cubes. So in the drop down menu, I'll select not walkable. When we now go back to the bake tab and bake the area again, you can see that the cubes are no longer walkable since the area around them is no longer blue. Please do keep in mind that if you change the position of an object or if you add ad additional objects that you should always bake again. All right, that's all the setting up done. Now let's get started with the agent code. I'll first select the agent object and add the navmes agent component to it. You can change a bunch of settings related to the agent, like the base offset, which is pretty much just the size of the agent. You can also change the speed, its angular speed and a bunch of other things. I like to put angular speed at a very high number like 360 so the agent turns three times as fast as normal. Now let's create a new script which I'll just call AI agent and then add that to the agent object. I'll now open up the script and remove the start and update functions and import unityengine.ai. The AI library will be used for all things related to navmesh and pathfinding. Now let's create a couple of variables. We'll first need a private navmesh agent called agent and a private transform called target. The agent variable will be the nav mesh agent component sitting on this object. And the target transform will be, you guessed it, the transform of the target object. To get the agent variable, we'll go into the start function and simply do agent equals get component nav mesh agent. This will get the nav mesh agent component attached to the current game object. For the target variable, there are a couple of things we can do. You can, for example, look for the target name to all objects in the scene. To do this, you can say target equals game object dot find and then within the bracket and the quotation marks I'll say target.transform. This method is very inefficient though since your regular scene can have thousands of objects in it. You can add the player tag to the player and look for that. To do that you'll just do target equals game object dot find game object with tag and then within the quotation marks I'll say player.transform. But right now I'm not using this to find the player object. So instead I'll just assign the variable manually which is something you can pretty much always do. To do this I'll remove the line for assigning the target variable and instead serialize the variable so I can assign it in the inspector without having to make it public. Now it's finally time to get the agent moving. This is pretty simple to do. I'll first create the private void update function which is called every frame and then in there I'll say agent.set-destination and then we'll give it an argument which will be the destination and that will be target.position. Meaning that now every frame the agent will start moving towards the target. This is pretty much all the code you need to get your agent moving. 
Now let's go back into Unity. Make sure you assign the target variable if you are doing it manually like me, and then press play to see the agent navigate towards the target object. You can see that it works pretty well, but there are some things that we can add to make it a bit better. First of all, I make sure to check if there's actually a target variable and if the agent can calculate a route to get there. To do this, I'll simply go back into the void update function, then I'll check if target does not equal null, so if there is actually a target, then I'll say agent.setDestination target.position. Earlier when I tested the agent, you can see that I moved into the target object, which you might not want. Please do be aware that if you're using rigid bodies, which I'm not right now, but if you are, then the agent will collide with your target, which might be what you want, but I thought I'd mention it real quick. All right, now let's make sure that, the, that when the agent gets to a certain distance to the target, he will stop moving. This is also pretty simple to add. First, I'll make two new variables. First one is a serialized field, private float, called stop distance threshold, just set equal to 5f, but you can change that to whatever you want. And then I'll create a private float called distance to target. When the distance to target gets below the stop distance threshold, the agent will stop moving. This is also very easy to implement. I'll just go into the if target does not equal null check, and then I'll say distance to target equals vector tree dot distance, which will calculate the distance between two points. And then the first point is transform dot position, and the second is target.position. Then I'll check if distance to target is greater than stop distance threshold, then I'll say agent.setDestination target.position. And if not, so else, if the distance to target is less than or equal to stop distance threshold, then I'll just say agent.setDestination transform.position. This is just a way to make sure it doesn't move anywhere. Let's now get back into Unity. Make sure to set the stop distance threshold to whatever fits best for you, and let's press play to test it out. You can see that the AI will move towards the target, but he won't completely move into the target object, exactly as we want. There are still a bunch of ways to improve this, but for now, you will understand the basics of Unity's NavMesh AI system. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider liking and subscribing, because it really helps me out. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one.